Hey guys, we're here at the van build. Everything is in full swing. Folks are starting to batten down the hatches a little bit for some rain that's in the forecast. We don't know how that's gonna shake out, but I'm here with Tile, and there's uh, some stuff on my channel of uh, his van from last year, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, bring him in this year and talk a little bit about the center cap infrastructure that he set up and the Farkle Hut, the, the, the now famous Farkle Hut. <laughs> and I uh, just want you to get a little uh, more of uh, Tile and uh, what he's all about and his contribution to the van build. Take it away. <laughs> uh, hi, um, you guys. Um, last year was my first year on the road in my rig. I spent three years uh, building it and of course watched Jamie's stuff. And the first thing I wanted to do was get to the van build. and. Uh, I got to the van build and I had a couple of spare batteries, a couple of flooded batteries that were mostly good. And I, and I came by your rig and my rig and I and I said, "Hey Jamie, uh, I got some batteries. Uh, do you want do you want them? They're used, but they're good." And he he said, "Yeah." And I and uh, so he came out to my rig and uh, and walked in my rig to help uh, get the batteries and said, "Whoa, this is a cool rig. Yeah, that's cool. You built this, blah blah blah." And I go, "Yeah." And uh, and then I said. By the way, um, I, I'm an electronics technician, and uh, what I can offer you is uh, if somebody comes up and says they got a weird problem, I can go troubleshoot it. And he goes, I get that all day long, man. You should probably park next to me after these guys with the meat leaf. And I go, well, yeah, but I got this Farkle Hut that I'm going to put out. I don't know if you're going to like that in your space. And uh, he says, Farkle Hut? What's a Farkle Hut? And then I showed him a picture on the phone, and he goes, oh, you've got to be here. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so I set up the Farkle Hut Center Camp um, for your event, and then um, we had a great time. And I had a great time last year with you and Seth at the van build, and uh, or Seth at the cleanup, and then um, at the party R afterwards. And it just became like radically apparent that the the problem for nomads is you know we don't have a bowling alley. We don't have a dance hall, we don't have a movie theater, we don't have a bar, we don't have a place where we can come together and hang out. Uh, you know, a campfire and a guitar is great for, you know, five or six people, but when you got 200 people, you need something bigger. And, um, and I grew up in the theater, my parents are ballet dancers, and, and I grew up doing summer stock with them in upstate, upstate New York in the summer, doing Annie Get Your Gun in Oklahoma and Brigadoon and all these shows, so I grew up in the theater. And it just became, yeah, I, uh, oh, and I even told you at the van build, I says, you know, I sold my house and I have uh, some money from that and there's a chunk of money that I'm setting aside to, um, to give to the community in some way. And at that time I thought it might be helping out you out buying land. And then as the season went on and I figured out this is what I want to do, and I, I told you and he goes, oh yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> we want that. And uh, so I spent 20 grand and this year and, and all summer building it. And so now what we have is a, what amounts to a, a mobile community center. It's my gift to the community, um, but there are ongoing costs. And so I will be putting up a Patreon page. And what I'm hoping is we get maybe a thousand people do five bucks a month. And that'll keep me going all year long, maintaining all the equipment and repairs and replacements and stuff like that. And then during the season, of course, there's a lot of fuel costs and bandwidth costs that I have to maintain all year long. So there are real costs of this thing all year long. And I'd like to cover that. And I think the, I don't, I, the community's already responded, you know. Um, Laura and uh, Danielle went around camp with a donations for tile bin, unbeknownst to me. And um, I had there was a good response, but I but I just as soon make it automatic so we can right. enjoy this without any of that. Just like you, it's time to. This is the way we can finance this thing, and then we don't have to sit there and go, "Hey, I need money for firewood or whatever it happens right, to be." Right, right, so, right. But it was, I, I I did this all summer long, wondering, is this going to work? And you tell me, does this work? It's working out great when we have the radio station up too. <laughs> That's such a nice thing. You want to tell that story? Sure. <laughs> you guys ought to hear this. Yeah, so... Wait, let me start. <clears throat> Tile, this year, we were sitting up in Flagstaff, and he said, uh, I'm going to put out a little radio station, so make sure when you make your announcements about the van build that everybody brings a little radio, just a little cheap transistor radio, whatever whatever you got. Not Don't spend a lot of money on it. 
And so I made some announcements and people came with radios and I even got a little radio to put up in my bus. It turns out that it was such an added amenity to the event that it's almost like we, I couldn't imagine doing it without the radio now. <clears throat> it brings everybody together who maybe couldn't even otherwise be here to some of the presentations and so forth. Take it from there. So, uh, Trip and Tommy, who's a, a, a ham and has been in the radio business, and I were talking about how to do this and how much power to put out and all that kind of stuff. And we made a slight miscalculation. <laughs> and the good citizens of Parker, Arizona, have been treated to Van Build Radio all week. And evidently, the Chamber of Commerce didn't like that very much. Sent the Rangers out to turn me off. So, uh, so uh, the lesson is... Uh, uh, keep it down it's got to be way down much lower than i thought but we got it dialed in now so it's just it'll just cover the the camping area uh with the radio it won't be quite as good a signal as it was uh before but we don't really need it it'll be totally intelligible so so all the future events the dome rock event this is right after here the uh sex cleanup which happens the 20, 20th sex cleanup which happens the 20th in uh, just south of Ehrenberg. Uh, and the Partiar, which happens the, t uh, the 10th of January at Skadden Wash. And then another thing that we're not sure where it's going to happen, a decompression party. All those will all have the FM radio and the Nomad Center Camp. And uh, uh, everybody's free to come down and hang out and use it. Um, if you have a talent, like there's going to be a guy talking about how to get in and out of Baja and have a good time. Um, come talk to me and we'll get you uh, uh, the ability to present your talent to the audience. That's one thing that this community has in spades is very, very talented people. And this gives them a, a platform to, uh, to communicate with all of us on um, uh, musicians. We had uh, some live music nights here. I've got uh, microphones and a mixer board and we had a great time doing live music. Asha came down, we did karaoke one night. So it, it really works, and, and uh, so please uh, check it out and, uh, and come to some of the events. If you want a, a schedule of the events, it's, it will be at nomadcentercamp.com is my website where you can find out where the events are. And then also there is a YouTube channel of Nomad Center Camp, but there's not much on it right now, but we're working on that. So just firing it up. If you guys haven't seen the Nomad Center Camp, this is what it looks like. Yeah. It's a... Two big tents and uh, a trailer in the middle that's got all my electronics in it and then bulletin boards and lights and uh, all that kind of stuff. Big speakers out front. Uh, lots of chairs and tables that I got to carry in my little trailer. It's kind of amazing. It's a huge production. It's a little bit of like the Ringling Brothers when you go in. <laughs> Everybody's pounding steaks and so forth. I, in fact, I got a guy in the crew who, who worked for a circus and he pounds steaks for me. And he like does nobody's great, business. Yeah, he does a great yep. job. Yeah. With that, thanks for watching, and uh, see you real soon. See ya.